everybody, and thank you for joining the Mike Lee Show. And today, honestly, it's very special for me and for you all because we've got the one and only Tawatha A.G. here with us. You know her from the group M2 May, and she has sang Back Up and Lead, and along with singing for Stephanie Mills, R. Kelly, Kashif, David Sanborn, Al Jarreau, Steely Dan, B-52, Celine Dion, OJ's, Aretha, and the maestro himself, Mr. Luther Vandross. All of these are just a few, just a little bit of the few that I handpicked that are some of my favorite uh, groups and people that I've listened to over my lifetime. But oh my God, there are so many others that she's worked with that I did not even list. You've heard this voice behind people and she's all ahead of her solo album. Uh, we'll be talking about that also uh, with some of my favorite songs, Thigh Ride, Did I Dream You, uh, that we used to bump back in the day. And so, here we are with the one and only Mr. Tawatha E.G. Tawatha, how are you today? I am so well. I'm blessed and highly favored, and I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank so you so much. We're, we're so glad to have you here today. Um, tell us about the beginning. I want to know about uh, where you're from and what it was like as a little girl growing up uh, before all of this incredible stuff started happening in your life. As a little girl growing up in Newark, New Jersey, mm -hmm. all I did was listen to music and read books. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. I listened to, there was a state, the, the black station, which was WNJR in Newark. Then the, in uh, New York City, there was this guy named DJ called Cousin Brucey, which played all the, the white pop uh, songs. Mm -hmm. And then there was a station called WNEW that played standards, which means I heard Tony Bennett, I heard Anthony Newley, I heard Sarah Vaughn. And so that I would listen to that and, and just read books and read liner notes from albums. Yes. And it's yes. Like, and it's like one day I'm gonna see my name on one of these things on one of these albums. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was a little, little girl. I mean, it's like, you know, some of the very people that you listened to back then, did you even imagine in your in your in your consciousness that you would be singing backup vocal arrangements, directing vocal contracting for those of you? Never, that never had a. No. Your father was in church, right? Did you also yeah. sing or play in church? I I said my father was a deacon, and he would do the um uh um the the call and response part of the um the service. Uh -huh. you, know, he, you know, they said, "Lord, Lord, I heard my cry." Uh -huh. Oh yes. Oh, yes. And so I, that's what I love. That's found, that's uh -huh. that's my foundation, and that's a very African thing. Oh, that, oh. that I learned later when I went to school. But mm -hmm. I sang with my father. I sang uh, in the choir. I played for the the juniorettes, you know, the the junior choir at my church. Mm -hmm. And so it's a uh, that, and that's how it started. That's wow. how it started. Let's talk about Howard University. Okay. Uh, Howard University and someone else who I love and adore, just like you, is the incomparable Angela Wimbush, uh, oh, yeah. Richard Smallwood. Oh, and, oh and, my and, people. And pianist uh, Shelton Beckton. Shelton Beckton, yes. yes Beckton. Um, you all were in a group called Hot Tea. Hot Tea. Let's yeah. talk about Hot Tea. Hot Tea was a group of Howard students from the, uh, from the College of Fine Arts. Uh -huh. And uh, we all played, we all sang. And um, it's like Angela and I decided to like start a group together because she was a student. I'm, I'm a year, uh, I was a year ahead of her. But when uh -huh. she came, she, she walked into my practice room one day and we just started singing. And, you know, we just, it just clicked. clicked. And then there was another girl named Elette who was in my class who, oh, the, the most amazing pianist ever 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 and then and they went to richard's church okay so richard had already graduated but he would be at the college of fine arts because he accompanied people for their recitals okay As a matter of fact he accompanied me for my recital mm -hmm. uh so so i knew them and uh and our churches would fellowship together so mm -hmm. it's like we should join a, we should have a group we should have a group. And we'd start writing our songs and then people would start inviting us to sing at their church. Mm -hmm. And so we so we we had a little success in, in the, you know, like the DMV area. So mm -hmm. and, and as college students, that was great. You know? uh -huh. What do you miss about those days, Tawatha? 
Mike, it was such an adventure because I was a very sheltered child. Like I told you, all I did was listen to music and read. So the, going to Howard was my first time away from home. So uh, it was it was quite an adventure, and 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 meeting people from other places and mm -hmm. and people who had similar lives to mine that I I would never have met, and so I would get a chance to meet people that I, I otherwise would have never met, mm -hmm. and so and and singing was my love, and um, I spent more as a, a college student I spent more time in church than I spent in class because I went to the Star Bethlehem Church of God in Christ. We mm -hmm. were there all the time. They had a great band. They mm -hmm. had a great music director. And you know, it was just because that was my foundation. That's all I knew. I didn't know anything other than that. Was it a place also where you felt safe? Yes, you could feel the the warmth. You could feel the warmth of it when, um, you know, when you walked in the door. Mm -hmm. so it, wow. was, it, was, it was a totally cool place, totally. Awesome. awesome. And I felt, I did feel safe there. And I would play, um, um, I, I stayed in the dormitory um, off campus. They had a, they had a piano in the common area, mm -hmm. and I would play the piano when people would gather around while I played. And I wasn't the best piano player, but I was singing from my heart because it was like, that's all mm -hmm. I could do, sing and play. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And then I go up to my room, <laughs> and then go to class. And it was you know that was my Howard life. Wow. Mm -hmm. the, the party school, the party school, and I spent more time in church than I, I never went to a party at, at Howard. Mm -hmm. Never, ever. Wow. Let's go to um, 1973. Uh, okay. You performed uh, with the group M2May from 1973 to 86. How did that come about? Um, I I did not perform in 1973 because okay. I graduated from Howard in 75. I met him two May in '76. I met him the summer the summer that I had graduated. Um, so that was '75. So the group was already formed in '73. Is that correct? Well, no. With the group uh, that you know of as M. Tume was playing for Miles Davis, and then they wow. played for Roberta Flack. Uh -huh. They left Roberta. Uh, uh, that's when M. Tume and Reggie were looking for a group to produce. They came to Howard, and they they uh, met Hot T. <laughs> and so and so we did uh we auditioned for them we did demos for uh -huh. Tume lucas and that didn't work out but as it turned out and tume and i lived in the same town okay. so he got my number he said call me when you come home from school mm -hmm. and i called him and he said well you know if you know if something comes up i'll give you a call and then he called and said i'm going to start a group would you like to be in it and i was like sure because mm -hmm. i didn't even know what I didn't even know what that was, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, it would be something different. Cause at this time I had graduated and I was a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, substitutes, they, they didn't make any money and work was sporadic. Mm -hmm. And I would get up and get dressed and wait for the phone to ring. Mm -hmm. So I could be ready to go to work. And mm -hmm. sometimes that phone didn't ring. Um, uh, but then in two may started calling me for sessions. And I realized that subs were making a very little money, like $50 a day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I would be a good week would be two or three days. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that they would call me. So, but when it, two may call me for a session, I could make more than that in a few hours. And it's like, wait a minute, let me, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, I think I'm gonna try this music thing. Cause this music thing, I can always fall back on my degree, mm -hmm. you know, but as it turned out, I never had to. Cause once I started with him two may, it just went. And then with the afternoon too, man, I met other people and and so on. And you know, and it just it just expanded from there. Wow. So you, you get into M2 May, you get mm -hmm. in the group, and you start started to having this success. Mm -hmm. Juicy. I, I thought but, but Juicy wasn't the first record though. Okay. Which when was the first record? The first one was Kiss This World Goodbye. Okay. okay. That's the one that had the closer I get to you on it. Because okay. he had they had written that for Roberta. Roberta. And Johnny, yes, yes. Which was very successful. I think they got they got a Grammy for that. And so um uh they did that, then they got a solo deal to do as a for a group in Tume Lucas. So in the group mm -hmm. we called him Tume. Mm -hmm. And so first record. We were, we were a little different. We were more Parliament, Funkadelic, Earth, Wind and Fire kind of sounding, mm -hmm. you know, with the uh -huh. horns and the costumes, uh -huh. the elaborate costumes. I saw you with some of the earrings on, like the feather earrings. Oh, the feathers yeah, and, the, yeah. and, the, and the Afro puff. And the, yeah, yeah, I thought, I was like, okay, I love it. 
we were very Afrocentric. Uh -huh. I always have been. But um, and then juicy, then juicy. But in between that time, between the first album, um, they they got a production deal, so they were producing other artists. Mm -hmm. So uh, so in 1983, juicy came out. But in between that time, they were doing uh, they were producing acts. Steph Stephanie Mills, Phyllis Hyman. Yeah. Like oh. and, and all those things, they were knocking them out the park. Yes. All those all those albums, all those projects were very yeah, successful. Yes, yes. Um Rick, did you guys get did did they ever do a deal with Wrigley's? No. No. As a matter of fact, they tried to stop that, you know, the juicy fruit. Wrigley's did? Yes, until Ntume, Ntume had to go in and talk to them and explain to them what Juicy Fruit was. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then they didn't, they didn't want to deal with it after that. So now it's, um, um, so there was no there was no problem with Wrigley's because they said, no, you can't use the name. You can't use the... Because I was like, stock should have gone up with Juicy's chewing gum, first of all. Juicy Fruit should have gone the hell out the window. With you know, it would have been great if they had worked together, but they didn't want anything to do with this this black group trying to. You, you How know, sad is that? How but sad. it had a totally different definition. Right. So, right. and then when he told them what it was, they they what could they do? They backed off. Yeah, As back opposed to saying, okay, let's work with this and mm -hmm. make some more money, like in the black community, because everybody's chewing juicy food gum. Everybody, you know, you know, did you want to go get some? You know. <laughs> <laughs> While you dance, two of the two of the one of my two of my favorite songs, obviously "Juicy" uh, and "You, Me, and He." Oh yeah! Oh my God! I mean, the moment those songs would come on, you just you just go, "That's my jam." Yeah. Uh, with creating those songs and, and singing those songs, what does that take you back to in, in your career? Because to me, music is so different now. I don't take anything away because everything evolves. Everything in the world evolved. Uh, I thank God that I've been here long enough on this planet to have heard some of the greatest music. You know, oh, the seven, yeah. the seventies, the eighties, the eighties, and then the nineties. Yes. To me, were some of the best singers and the best production you could ever, you know. Ever and I think that's because people were encouraged to be in, uh, individual. Yeah. They were encouraged. They were encouraged to be unique. After a while, it, it became cookie cutter. Cookie cutter, yeah. Because everybody following the same thing, right? Everybody, if 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 so and so had a hit, then every other song that you heard a female singing had to sound like that. And it's right. like, what's the good of that? When I came up, I, there was Aretha, there was Gladys, there was Dion, there was a uh, the Diana Ross and the Supremes, there was the Martha and the Vandellas, and uh, it was like every, every the the uh, don't mess with Bill. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. everybody was different. Yeah, everybody, everybody was unique. So you went to see people for different reasons, as opposed to yeah. just. Well, now it's it's just it's just different. It's yeah, different. it's just so different. I agree with you. the The uniqueness was also in the the artist and in yes. the sound and the sound and the production. The message, yes. Sometimes the message, because oh, yeah. you know I love the I love the Rita Franklin, but there <laughs> were times that I I could park up and I remember when I used to go to see Anita Baker. I wanted to hear the. The, the 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 jazziness. I wanted to see her sling the dress and do right, all the right. things that you saw in the video. Yeah. Uh, when I saw uh, when I would go see a Patty Austin, uh, 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 Shaka Khan, every right. all the all the people were different. I yeah. so agree with you on that. Um, what kind of doors did that open for you as a singer uh, to be in a group and to have those kind of hits uh, and to be the kind of person that you was like you say, sort of maybe a recluse, not really into people, yeah. things, and just right. learn a little bit and, and not a whole lot. And for to you to be catapulted into this group and to have that type of success. Do the, you know, can door. you imagine that adventure from, from just listening to music on the radio to hearing yourself on the radio with other people? I mean, I can always pick out my voice no matter who I'm working with. Uh -huh. I can always, I always hear my voice, but that the working with him to and doing the production projects just open doors for me to work with other people mm -hmm. now sometimes when you're in a group they don't want you to work with anybody else and to encouraged me to go out and work with other people because after a while people like that sound the the sound that him had especially with his vocals and they wanted that for their projects so people started calling me to sing background vocals on their projects thinking that it was going to be like him mm -hmm. you know what i mean so 
that expanded a lot for me. That expanded a lot for me. And then I got a chance to, to call other singers uh, mm -hmm. because I was the contractor. So I, I hired the singers. When um, we did our first record, I wanted Luther to sing on uh, on the first record. And Luther sang on our, my first record. I mean, the band, the Entume band's first record. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Luther and I became great friends. And then he would call me for sessions. I'd call him for jobs. And then after a while, I sang on his demo for for never too much and he kept the back he kept the 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 uh, reference vocals from the the demo for the permanent record never too much don't you know that and you stop loving me those three songs were on the first album and those are uh, that's uh philip blue the late philip blue myself and luther singing on those songs you stop loving me you stop loving me and i don't know what to do don't oh, oh, oh. yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, how did you meet that incredible man, Luther Blandros? I called him for a job. Hmm. I called him for a job. It's like I called the union and said, I'm, I want to get in touch with the man who is singing the Juicy Fruit commercial because he had this big commercial for Juicy yeah, Fruit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I want them, I need to know the name of the person who's singing the Juicy Fruit commercial. They gave me his name. I got in touch with his manager and then I, I got in touch with him and called him for a, a session and he came. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and you guys would end up probably being the best of, of musical friends and just friends. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because uh, Luther, I sang on every album except for one or two when, when Juicy Fruit came out. Uh -huh. And then I was on tour with somebody else. I was probably in Europe or something and couldn't get back. Oh, yeah. I'm like you. Um, all I did when I was younger, we'll cut this out. I used to love music. That's all That's all yes. I had. Yeah. It would, it would, you, I would put my earphones on or get in the speakers. Cause I want yes, to. I would be course. in. The, I would be in the speakers to just listen. Oh, would you like put them up to your head like this? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I, I wanted to hear Steely everything. Dan like that. I would listen to Steely Dan because there was so many parts going on. It's like, oh my God, did you hear that? And then that was Valerie Simpson in there. So, like, oh my God, I heard Valerie Simpson. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What do you miss? What do you miss the most about Luther? Oh, I miss the sense of family because we were we were truly family yeah. uh and he he was the he was the head of the house he was the head mm -hmm. of the house he he collected this group of singers and just formed it into you know a family a, a family. family and everybody knew their parts he knew what everybody could do and that's what he assigned to every person as far as the singing was concerned and then it was just we had so much fun singing who knew that these songs were going to become hits you know, we were just there. We were having fun. I mean, it was work, but we we had a lot of fun. So I I, I miss that about Luther because he was he was a he was a funny man, very funny. Mm -hmm. But uh, and and he was very generous, and uh, you know, and he he called us every year. It was like in January, Luther calls because you know we got to set up set up to do his project mm -hmm. so we could come out by by the summertime, uh -huh. you know? and then you know do the tour, and then you know. We, you know, every year, every yeah. year. Yeah, I've seen I've seen you on so many tours. I'm gonna call out a few names, and you just tell me okay. what you, what you think about these these these. Uh, Angela Wimbush. Oh, that's my girl. That's my little sis. Mm. I mean, what can I say about her? She's amazing. You know, <laughs> and and I knew her before all of the all of the hoop. Yeah, so, so you guys were in college. Yes, yeah. yeah. We were in college together. So yeah. that's that's my girl. That's my. That's my sister, and that's my singing sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. love her voice. Um, Absolutely, you're so unique. Yeah, Aretha Franklin. Definitely the queen. the queen, definitely the queen. Let me tell you, when I was at Howard, I had posters of Aretha on my wall. I mean, not knowing that 10 years later, I would be singing a, 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 on a project for her. And mm -hmm. then she liked that project so much until she wanted the same singers that were on the project. She wanted to take them on the road. Mm -hmm. And I worked with Aretha for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, she had her East Coast singers. She had her singers, West Coast singers. Uh -huh. And she had uh, her singers from Chicago and Detroit. So wh wh wherever she was in the country, she had a group of singers. Wow. I was in the East Coast. The wow. Yeah. You worked a lot with Luther with people like Cheryl Lynn, Dion oh, yes. Warwick. Yeah, um, I wrote a song for Cheryl Lynn. Yeah. Oh, was it Instant Love? Oh, I wish. 
That was like, oh, Lord. No. From the first time that I saw you. It, but, oh, you know how love. Yeah, people that may, oh, you can sing. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I heard that. I heard that. Um, it, you know, um, you can just hear uh, one or two words from a song. It's like sort of like name that tune. Yes, and, yes. And you know what the song is. Yes, know? yes. Oh, I used to love that show too. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think the song I wrote for um, Cheryl Lynn was Day After Day. Oh, my God. You wrote Day After Day? Yes, yes. I know it. That's, I love, that's, that's something, so I like, that's something I Albert Luther produced, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Not, he looked and said, you know, I need a song for Cheryl Lynn. Can you write a song for me? Mm. It's like, okay. And that's what I gave him. I love that song. I love that song. <laughs> oh, thank you. So when he, the, the most fascinating thing that I used to love about Luther is him touching other people. So when he would do something on a Lisa Fisher or Cheryl Lynn or Dionne Warwick, mm -hmm. I forgot who else he wrote for. It was a white guy he did some stuff with. Um, I forgot the name. But anyway, I was, I was just, I was so excited because... It, the sound, I knew some of his sound right. would impact the artists and the and the music and the backup and all of the all you guys from Lisa to Kevin to Ava to uh, uh, Alpha you that 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 whole entourage was gonna right. be. I have tick, little ticket stubs from the eighties, nineties uh -huh. uh, when I had to go see Luther. Yes. I had to see him for the yes. sound, the concert, the costumes, the. the just the, the stage, the, the stage, stage show. He just gave you a show. Yes. He gave you a show. He yes. gave you Vegas before they had residencies in Vegas. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. it was like with the with the ball gowns and the beaded jackets and just yeah. the, the fabulousness ness of it all. I remember uh, throughout the, the the night I fell in love tour. Mm -hmm. I I went to that. It was in the eighties, okay. and I had never really. I, Gotten out and done a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, I scrapped I scrapped up my money and I went by myself. Mm -hmm. I bought all the albums. I was invested into everything this guy's doing musically. And I go to this concert. Mm -hmm. And it changed my whole perception of what I thought concerts would be like. Because yeah. from the moment everything every it wasn't just about Luther. He surrounded himself with the impeccable musicians. The yes. dancers, the yes. singers, yes. everything was on a level. It, he didn't outshine anything. Everything was just, everything was impeccable. Everything is what completed the whole. That whole. was his vision. That yes. was his vision. Yeah. You know? So it was like, he he had always had that. He yeah. always had that. Yeah. I mean, wh when I worked with Luther, we had to wear our own clothes. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how long ago it was when we, when he, we first got started mm -hmm. with Luther. And then... After a while, with the success came the, you know, you got the custom gowns, you got the custom shoes, the custom everything, yes. just the hair, the makeup and everything. So, um, um, oh, but let me tell you this story about Luther. Yes, yes. Um, uh, this is a little tidbit. When um, Luther was getting ready to get his group together uh, to, to perform, mm -hmm. um, not, not the group Luther, this was when Luther was a solo artist. Okay, okay? I so remember the group getting ready for a tour. I called his manager and said, I would be interested in, uh, you know, singing with Luther. And mm -hmm. so he says, um, uh, how tall are you? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what difference does that make? <laughs> he, said, he says, well, Luther has a height requirement. Uh -huh. So I sang with Luther the first few years before the height requirement, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, but then later he, you had to be a certain height to be on the stage because he had a look, he had a vision for a look. look. I would be singing in the pit because uh -huh. he had four singers in the pit, yes, he had I four singers on stage, yes. and then he had the band. So that's why that sound was so full. Yes. You know, because he, he had eight singers, yeah. seven or eight singers. Yeah. So it was amazing. Like a freaking choir. Yeah. And, but wait a minute, but we would be just as dressed as <laughs> Down in the pit, just look how sharp. But you know what? I, if I was on stage, I'd be jealous. I'm like, y'all sit down, man. I got to do all this movie. No, 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 but no. That no. was that was but amazing. It was, it was it was the way he put it together. Yes, you know, yes. you can't do all that singing and dancing and still get that full sound. So Absolutely. you need that extra support. Absolutely. So, um, it was it was it was an amazing time. I learned a lot about presentation. Yes. For, for, from Luther, and um, he was an amazing man. Yeah. Um, and going back to M2 May, why did the did the group break up? Was it just a mutual 
the group didn't oh, break up. The, so the group, group did not even up. break up. Okay. It, it just it so it faded away. Yeah, okay, so I got you. Away. I got you. Yeah. yeah. The, the sound had started to change. Yes. And everyone was doing their own little projects. Gotcha. And so and with the with Entume and Entume Lucas, each you know each project that they had. We were uh, we would compete to have songs on each of their projects, mm -hmm. so we were always encouraged to do do our own thing. Gotcha. And, and in between the M two May projects, I'm out on tour with different people. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like oh, I got this job, this job. As a matter of fact, when when he wrote Juicy Fruit, I was out on tour with Brian Ferry and Roxy Music. I was in Europe. Mm -hmm. He had done, we had done most of the record, but he called me and said I was in England. He said I got one more song. Just so happened I had some time off. I flew back to 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 the states. We did that last song, which was Juicy Fruit. Wow, wow. The last song. Which you hear that? And then I went back. Wait a minute. Then we uh -huh. went back. Yes. And so yeah. I went back to, to 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 England, and then he would tell me the progress of the record. You know, it was like it was like number ninety nine, <laughs> mm -hmm. and number seventy, and then fifty and thirty, and then it got to number one. He, I was out, I was out with Brian, Brian Ferry and Roxy Music, and he said, "You're not going to believe this. The record is number one, and that Brian Ferry and Roxy Music were on their way to New York. They had a show at Radio City Music Hall, mm -hmm. and they were so kind. They played Juicy Fruit during their intermission. Oh, that's awesome! You know what I mean? And so it's like, awesome. you know, I work with some great people, but um, and then Juicy was number one for eight weeks. So it's like, oh, I had to get ready. You had to leave Roxy and get ready for the Juicy Fruit tour. Yeah. So yeah. you, know, you got to strike while the iron is hot. Iron is hot. Yes. yes. Um, welcome to my dream. Mm -hmm. Your Dave, your album. Uh, yes, yeah, solo album, right? And your only album. Why you have you made? Why, why have you made us album? suffer? We have been suffering because you have one of the most unique vocals in the world you couldn't let me just give you your let me give you your flowers you okay. couldn't have done the work that you've done and been this successful if you did not have them chops you i listened to you today and i went damn oh yeah. my god yeah. your vocals are it but it's it's just beautiful like yeah. the way you sing the way you sing it's the way yeah. you do what you do yeah okay let me tell you the way we worked we had projects okay. the Wapa album was a project uh -huh. <laughs> it's like okay because you know with with all the projects that they did i would sing like the reference vocals for the artists so mm -hmm. they knew what the song sounded like uh -huh. and so now it's time to do the uh they had a spot it's like you want to do a record sure but in the meantime, I'm still working with other people. So we did right. that. Did the Tawatha album and then went out to work with other people. So right. it's like if it does if it does something, fine. If it doesn't, fine, because I'm still working. So my my goal wasn't to gotcha. be the soloist. My goal wasn't to be the I could be a soloist in the band. That I love that. But just to be out there, no, because I'm I am the quintessential support singer, the background singer. Gotcha. So that's that's what I love to do. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So you and, and to me, you have been successful. You have worked with everybody in this industry, rock, R and B, jazz, Al Jarreau. I was talking to the country, fifty yeah. twos, all the way to yeah. Steely Dan. Steely I mean, Dan uh, and and um, David Bowie. Yeah, uh, wow. I mean, it's just like, oh my God, that's David Bowie. Can you believe that? Do you, have to, do you have to pinch yourself because this is you to AG, the, the girl, 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 from from Newark. Newark. girl from Newark. The little girl from Newark is yeah. like, I, I can't believe it. I said, look, I'm looking at Aretha Franklin playing the piano and it's like, I can't believe I'm standing here. And sometimes she would sing me to tears. I would just cry because she, mm -hmm. she just, she just evoked such emotion in me. Mm -hmm. I would just, oh, oh my God. Yeah. She, yeah. She was amazing. But to, look, Steely Dan. I mean, the people that I would listen to with my head in the speaker. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm up there singing Peg or or Deacon Blues, oh. and it's like I did like three tours with them. And mm. then then there's Lenny Kravitz. It's like okay, little rock and roll. He called me, Mr. Washington. Would you like to Would you like to go out on the road with me? It's like no, well, Lenny. You sure you want me? You know. <laughs> uh, wow. you know uh, but yes, and I did two or three tours with him, and then um, it's 
everybody that I've worked with, they always call me back. They always call me back. Dave Matthews, I worked with them in like early 2000, 1999, 2000. In 2012, 2013, 14, and 15, they called me again. So Brian Ferry, Roxy Music, they called me again. But I, I was, I, I used to do a lot of uh, David Letterman late night TV shows in New York City. Uh, um, and one day we were singing behind Brian Ferry. And no, I don't think people knew that I had worked with him in early, in, back in the day. Mm -hmm. So he saw, he saw me and my friend Fonzie, Fonzie Thornton. Fonzie Thornton, uh, yeah. Another singer who, uh, that's my road buddy. I mean, every time I'm on stage, 99% of the time, I'm standing next to Fonzie. If you know that I know Luther, you know that I know Fonzie. The yes. lineup, I know the lineup. You guys are incredible, incredible. I just had to put his name out there, but well, he saw you. us, he saw us because we were getting ready to sing with him on the David Letterman show, he asked us to do his U.S. tour, okay? And then uh, in 2019, they got inducted, Brian Ferry and Roxy Music were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They asked us to sing since we were with the first in the Avalon tour. So, um, and they got a, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame award for Avalon and all the work that they've done. And Fonzie and I were there singing. And we did his U.S. tour again, and we did his world tour again. In 2019, I was with Brian Ferry like all year. Mm -hmm. so, wow. And then 2020 happened, and then everything shut down. But um, you know, it's 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 been a it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life, and everything is an adventure. And I'm looking forward to the next the next thing. I don't know what it's going to be because mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't plan like that. But it's like. I, I'm looking forward to whatever the next chapter in my life is going to be. Outside of music, what is your legacy to leave behind, to leave us? Um, outside of music, because music is everything to me. Um, outside of music, it's like, I would like to impart common sense. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, everybody can't be, everybody's not going to be a star. Mm -hmm. but you know what? There's so many other jobs outside of being in the front that you could do to support yourself and live you and, and, and treat yourself lovely. You know, I like to treat myself lovely. So it's like, Hey, I didn't do too bad for just being in the back, but you know, but I, but my goal was not to be in the front, but outside of that is, you know, to have a backup, you got to have a backup plan. I sound like my mother. Now you got to have a backup plan. Fortunately, mm -hmm. my first plan worked. You mm -hmm. know? So I didn't really have to lean on the, the second thing but you you got to do that and you got to prepare for later i know when you're 20 you don't care about you know you don't care about later you care about right now but you, you gotta you gotta protect yourself have common sense um and and study whatever it is you like to do i mean for whoever i work with i study the the group i uh whether it's chromio dave matthews uh steely dan barry manilow screedy politi jay giles band aretha <laughs> luther whoever it's like i i listen to every bruce springsteen i mean i listen to all i listen to them i i, I understand what the style is so i can see what they like you know and so it's like the backup plan is to be prepared is to be prepared and whatever it is you you're trying to do mm -hmm. be prepared. Be prepared. well i want you to know um when i got into radio 2016 uh, I've been in radio for a while and I've had a wish list of people mm -hmm. that I wanted to interview. You were on that you were on that list. Are you kidding you, me? On my mom's grave. You were on that list. I wanted and I even reached out a few times. But you know what I love about the universe mm -hmm. is that the things that you reach for sometimes you're not ready for. It's right. not the time. Mm -hmm. But if you allow yourself just to get better at what you do or mm -hmm. keep working the universe opens up and it comes right. to you. When oh I, my God, you know what? Mm, I yeah. just told somebody that not too long ago. I said, mm -hmm. I never pursued anything. Everything mm -hmm. everything just came to me because it, it came to me at the time it was supposed to come. Supposed to come. So that message is to anybody who, when you're watching this, whatever you're doing in life, mm -hmm. keep doing, keep going. If it's yeah. not working for you now, don't give up. Don't keep give up. Going. Keep working out. It's like a gym, working yeah. out on whatever that thing is. Right, right. Let the universe come to you. And so I say this to you, to Watha AG, who's done all this incredible work with all of these incredible vocalists, but your vocals, it was mm -hmm. your vocals to me that was important. 
even when I was listening to Luther, even when I was listening to him, right. even when I was listening to Aretha, because I have adored your vocal for all uh -huh. these years. So when I think about our black history and all these things that we look up to, you are incredible at what you do. And I salute you because you are just it. You are that thing that you want to accomplish out, out of all the great things that you've done with your music and your career. And then you're sitting up here with this pretty beautiful skin. You don't look, I looked at your college pictures earlier today and I'm like, how in the hell does she look as beautiful as she does now? It's not a wrinkle, it's just as beautiful. You look fabulous. No, just the skin itself. Like you look beautiful. So that must be, and for people to hire you over and over again, that says not only something about your vocal, but about who you are as a person. Because that uh, relationships in this business and just in the world, it's, it's, important. All, it's important. So I salute you today, my sister, because Thank you. you fulfill something on my wish list, on my bucket list that I wanted to, to do. And that was just to sit down and talk with a legend, a legacy. Oh, so wow. I, I, I am so honored today to I'm talk so, with you. So, I'm so honored that you that, that you feel that way. I'm so I do, I do, I do. Let me like, get we have Aretha, like we have an Aretha on my dorm wall and then then she's right there. You yeah, I mean? yeah. It's, that's how this feels because um, I, I never, a moment ago, and I'm gonna cut all this out. A moment ago, I had to, to like go, oh my God, you're talking to two <laughs> And she's a regular person. She's so funny. And she's like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> Beautiful, but yeah, but what you've done, I, I love love your music, love your career, and thank you so much for taking the time out to be with us today. Jamie, I told Jamie that I would be talking to you. Jamie Foster Brown, and she told me to say, she said, tell her, I said, you know, Jamie. Yes, 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 yes. She told me to send her love and to tell you hello. She was very excited uh, for me to talk to you today. Oh, I'm so happy. Tell her, oh, send her my love, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, because it's obvious that you you know the music and i love that i love that you were prepared you know what i'm saying and, and you're you. asking me you're asking me things that you know not not the regular not the 10 regular questions you know what i mean that the oh, people always you. get you really you dug in there and you you knew the material thank so, you thank you very much and as a singer you got to do the same thing you gotta you gotta be ready you yeah. gotta stay ready to be ready yeah you're right I love you. You're the best in everything you do. It is such it's such an honor to have met you today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Everybody, thanks for tuning in today to the Mike Lee Show. This has been a special for me, y'all. I don't know about you, but it's been special for me. The one and only Tawatha AG. Thank you so much, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.